Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about the strategy that you should be employing when you're picking your products to launch on Amazon. Should you just go with one? Should you go all in on this super brand heavy product? Should you launch five different products all at cheap budget? We're gonna be talking about that today. Be sure to stick around to the end if that sounds like something you'd be interested in watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But without further ado, let's just get right into it. All right, so we are here in my computer and this is a product I was actually just thinking about ordering. I have a couple of nicks on some of my frets. I'm just gonna get a fret leveling tool. And it just kind of helped me come up with today's video idea. Uh, I was like, you know, this is something that I'm actually kind of passionate about. I could get behind, you know, guitar tools. Maybe it's not this one, but this one will work as kind of the, the symbol for what this represents. So this brings up an important question because I'm asked this all the time. Should you sell something that you're highly attached to? Should you build a brand, brand that you can be passionate about? Should you build a general store? Should you just launch, launch one product at a really high um, level of focus or should you launch several products as testing products? It's a pretty broad topic. We're gonna try and fit it all into one short video here today. So let, let's just go over the pros of both really quick. Usually things that you're extremely passionate about, you're kind of relentless about them, right? If you're truly trying to learn how to play guitar and that's something that you've set your mind on, you're never gonna stop, you're gonna learn how to do it. It's the same thing with some products. If the demand is there, if the market meets a certain criteria as far as competition goes, if you're ruthless enough and you're dumping enough energy and time and for one thing, capital into it, um, you're, you're probably going to get there. Maybe it goes three months without being profitable, but eventually you might get it to break through to the point where it could be something that you're both passionate about and you're making money from, and that's awesome. Moving on to the next situation, the product that is in a general store situation. You're not exactly thrilled to be selling this but it makes you money and that's all that matters. So maybe we go to something like the shelf market, right? There's very few people who are extremely passionate about shelves. I certainly am not, I sell one. Um, it, it kind of is just a product that financially makes sense. From a business standpoint, it makes sense. The demand is there, something you can sell. And then I could go from shell selling a shelf to selling another home decor item, back to selling a different kind of shelf, so on and so forth. This is the general store, right? There's no real passion attached to this other than the passion of the business model itself. And then lastly, there is the um, seller who does, let's do Amazon again. And I don't know, I'm running out of concepts here, but it, don't worry about the idea that I'm gonna show you specifically. Um, maybe we go to like that thing we were using a while ago. It's like the half moon plant holder thing. There's the seller who launches very uncompetitive markets with very poor quality listings and doesn't just do one thing, he picks a bunch of different things to sell. So we have the hyper-focused, passionate seller. We have the seller who does one thing at a time, focusing each time, but does them in markets where it's not tied to any specific passion. Then we have the seller who does not have the passionate one product or the focused one product at a time in slightly more competitive markets. We have this seller who is the tester, the experimenter and the mad scientist. <laughs> and I'm hoping that I could just, no matter which one of these sellers you are, give the viewpoint of each um, because I've thought or done one of these at um, different points in my selling career on Amazon. So what I'm leaning towards now and we'll just break through to that right here is that I would say you should be a little bit of a mad scientist. Go into places where people aren't necessarily excited to go, but really establish yourself and test many things. This is not going to be for the people that have $1,000 to start. That's you. You probably should do this and just do it one focused. You could kind of mingle these, right? You could go the focused presentation one at a time selling um, in various different general store type situations. You could do that here, but instead of doing many, I want to just do one. The only difference between these last two, the kind of focused one at a time general store versus the mad scientist, is the mad scientist dumps energy into several different projects at once. That can be both a bad and a good thing. So this kind of seller is focused on scaling fast. This kind of seller is focused on successful products and success ratios of product launches to product failures. Um, again, none of these are wrong. The passionate seller is probably the one that's most dedicated to making something work. The last one to give up on a product idea. 
and probably the first one to highly customize a product because they know the needs themselves of that product. This seller right here, this is for all of you out there who have maybe five, 10, 15, $20,000 to start Amazon. You're like, what's my quickest way to figuring this business model out? I would say pick a bunch of low competition products, make a list of three to five and test each of them. It's something that I'm actually doing right now behind the scenes. Um, I've been busy with my other, other Amazon account that isn't public. Um, working on this with a business partner, we're, we're, we're just throwing things up like left and right, right? We just finally got the, the account up maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago. We've already got three products, almost four different products on the way. Um, so with that being said, I'm in this kind of mad scientist mood right now. My hair certainly looks like a mad scientist in 2020, right? Um, anyway, I have a task for you. I have a little bit of a homework assignment for you. Go find three to five extremely low competition yet products that are still selling maybe five, six, seven units a day, um, kind of products, kind of markets, and pick several of them to try and experiment with launches in. Keep in mind, you need to be able to reorder for both of these. So if you're gonna take this approach, remember, this is not as cheap as doing one product at a time. But for those of you who wanna scale fast, wanna really figure this business model out, you'd be surprised the thing you thought might work best might not end up being the product that you discontinue after your first order. Maybe the two or three that you were just like, oh, we'll just throw these up and try, might be some of your best products. Uh, that personally happened to me in the beginning of 2020, I launched the macrame shelf, which ended up being my most successful product for the year, did over six figures in sales, and yet that was one of the ones where I was just like, it looks pretty good, I'll try it. The other two um, products I was actually more excited about ended up being things that I just sold out of, didn't reorder. They were basically break even products. So that's kind of the pro being a mad scientist kind of seller. That's just what I'm coining that term. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the notification bell down below so you get notified anytime that I post videos like this one. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much. Later. Mm -hmm.